President Bola Tinubu promises to address challenges in financial markets and count down to Imo, Baelsa, and Kobe gubernatorial elections. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. <clears throat> President Bola Tinumbu has said that his government is not blind to the challenges several Nigerians are facing in the financial markets. He allayed the concerns of the business community, assuring them that crucial plans are underway to improve foreign exchange liquidity. While speaking at the 29th National Economic Summit Group meeting yesterday, the president said his administration will honor every legitimate contract with respect to the nation's foreign exchange obligations and also revealed that his government has a good line of sight for the additional foreign exchange liquidity that is required to restore market confidence. Joining me to discuss this and dissect the president's address is Dr. Muda Yusuf, Director, CEO, Center for the Promotion of Private Enterprise, CPPE, and Paul Alaje, Chief Economist, SPM Professionals. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank, Thank you so you. very much for having us. Thank you very much for uh, the privilege of uh, guesting on the show. Uh, gentlemen, uh, let me start with uh, Mr. Muda Yusuf. Uh, to a layman like me, who only sees the reality of the marketplace, in the last four months, uh, the Naira seemed to have lost more than 50% prices of uh, everyday items. Consumables are shooting into the stratospheres. What and initially, most of you people who are somewhat knowledgeable about economics were praising, were praising the president on some of the measures he took when, when, he, when he landed in office. Uh, the removal of subsidy, the unification, supposed unification of, uh, of the forex markets. So, Mr. Yusuf. What would be your response to the confusion of an average or the uh, astoundment of a sort of an average person like me? All the, the steps that the president has taken so far, especially in the first one or two months of his administration, were steps that were meant to effect corrections. In the economy. I would like to call it corrective reforms. Because if you had continued on that trajectory, uh, the consequences uh, will be very, very profound. And you know, when you are taking steps to correct things that have gone wrong, it's like undertaking a surgery on a patient. These things naturally come with a lot of discomfort. And I'm happy that the president retreated that when he was addressing the economic summit group. That he is aware of the pains and the challenges that these things have inflicted on Nigerians. So the reforms were inevitable. Would it have been done at a better time? Perhaps no. Because for this kind of things, there is no perfect time to do them. The earlier the steps were taken, the better. What I can say was missing was the speed of response to mitigate the pains of the reforms. 
if you undertake a surgery, the surgeon will arrange for anesthesia. After the surgery, they will arrange for pain relievers and all of that. The same thing ought to have happened, especially with the first subsidy thing. I had expected a much faster response in terms of relief measures that will be that will trickle down to the entire citizen that unfortunately did not happen right now the president is still grappling with or the administration is still grappling with how to actually deliver palliatives that should be inclusive in nature but as to whether we needed those reforms yes they were inevitable there are things that we need to do if we must have an economy that is sustainable and I want to believe that these challenges are transitional challenges. I believe that with time, this will face that. And I like the, the confidence that the president about clear indications or pathways on how to resolve this problem, particularly this foreign exchange crisis. So I just pray that those pronouncements are not based on assumptions that cannot stand. I pray that they come to materialize. If that happens, then we'll be on the way to, to getting out of this crisis. Uh, Mr. Alaje, one would have thought that for somebody who was resolved, who was determined, to take such dramatic measures, as inevitable as um, as Mr. Yusuf has painted those measures, one would have thought that scenarios would have been played with uh, prior to the enactment of the policies. It it does seem at this juncture to an average uh, an average Nigerian that uh, we just we are just left in the lurch. We we just left in the middle of the ocean. Uh, we see everything sinking. Uh, it does seem that the Naira is uh, daily sinking. And uh, so how, how would you want to address an average Nigerian listening to an expert like yourself now? Thank you so very much for having me once again. I had mentioned between March and April, today, it is not just subsidy that is removed. We have also seen flotation in an economy that 40% of the FX depends on the on importation of PMS, the raw material which, of which we have in our country. As a result, when you don't bother about economic outcomes, economic impact, in most cases, negative, we catch up with most developing countries. It was clear that Nigeria needed to take a decision regarding doing something about subsidy. But what we must do first is to ensure that we control our own destiny. As I speak with you today, that destiny is still not controlled. We are not able to manage the supply side. We have done everything possible to manage the demand side. We are looking at how to boost, to curtail demand or slow down the rate of acceleration of the demand. But what we have not done is how do we manage the supply side? I understand uh, uh, some of the uh, comments and uh, pronunciation that has been made by His Excellency, Mr. President. Uh, but you know, it, it's important for us to keep hope alive for many Nigerians. But many are wondering, how will this thing be? Which, of course, he said in the only book. How will this thing be? We're not saying it's not impossible, because, of course, government is government. But how do we create that monitoring system such that we can take decisions for those who don't mean well for our nation, those who just want to hold dollars because of issues of confidence on the local currency? Unfortunately, if we all say we don't have confidence in Naira, it will continue to hold the it will continue to hold the economy, and we will be committing the same slippery slope error of uh, it's falling today, let me quickly go and change all my money to dollar. The more we all rush to change to dollars, the more the value will go down until we are able to put a stop. Now, 
the big elephant in the room is at what point will government put that stop? What are we going to do? And I just tell you, and I've taught so many correspondents around our country and around the world, the permanent solution to challenges of FX is not just to talk to the demand side. We must have a viable supply. And that supply I'm not seeing as of today. And I'm hoping that the authorities of our country will start seeing the importance of curtailing, of, of, of amplifying supply and curtailing demand to a large extent. Uh, Mr. Yusuf, the president yesterday uh, said he had uh, a trick up his sleeve on how to get 10 billion US dollars injected into uh, into the economy, which ordinarily to any anybody who follows uh, basic economics would know that would may help to to curtail the stampede that is ongoing now. But beyond that, you know, I want you to I want you to talk to that. But beyond that, what can a very tutored mind like you uh, suggest? To curtail the seeming, the seeming helplessness that is discernible in how the government seems to be uh, conducting itself, or, or itself on matters of, of the economy, Mr. Yusuf. Well, uh, first, I, I. I was impressed by the optimism of the president, and uh, and that was further reinforced by the pronouncements of the finance minister as to their strategy to be able to mobilize external resources to be able to deal with the current crisis of confidence. Because at the heart of all of this challenge is the collapse of confidence. Once confidence collapses in any system, there's no more to be panic. There's it's also no more you know, to have people, people become anxious, a lot of anxiety, panic buying, and all manner of issues. And the good thing about the posture of the president and his economic team is that they have prioritized the resolution of this crisis. Because just as uh, my colleague Paul said, foreign exchange is at the heart of so many things in the economy. Unfortunately, and very unfortunately, the economy is excessively import dependent, especially for energy, energy products, and many other things, of course. So that is why the economy is highly sensitive to developments around the foreign exchange. So to the extent that the government has promised, and they are very specific about timelines, so they have also put themselves at least uh, for people to monitor, to see what exactly and how quickly these promises will materialize. That uh, is something for me that is positive on the assumption that it eventually materializes. I'm also very, very impressed by the fact that the administration is ready to partner with the private sector, to partner with stakeholders in resolving this issue. They are not claiming to know everything. And the central bank governor said that much, even before now, that there is going to be robust stakeholder engagement going forward. Now, as to the challenges for the average Nigerian, because the ordinary people listening to us ordinarily will not appreciate all this grammar that we are talking about, just as you said. 
the only way they can appreciate that something has happened first is for us to see a stabilization in the foreign exchange markets possibly a reduction in the current exchange rates to see a reduction in inflation especially with respect to food and transportation to see a reduction in energy prices and to see a reduction in many other things that have become very very expensive so i expect the administration at least on sector specific basis outside dealing with the macroeconomic issues i need to see some responses with respect to agriculture specifically agriculture and food security apart from the generic things that we do because it's an emergency we go out there the level of hunger is, is unimaginable so beyond what the government is doing about foreign exchange and the rest we need to do something quickly about the issue of food and we need to bring stakeholders to the table both those who are in primary production those who are in processing those who are in uh, packaging marketing let us bring them to the table and let them look at quick wins as to how we can bring down the cost of food. You can put a lot of options on the table. You can put import, import duty options. You can put trade policy options. You can put fiscal policy options. You can put tax policy op options to crash the price of food. The same thing with transportation. Transportation is a big issue especially in an economy where we don't have effective public transportation system that is driven by government. It's a very big issue. Whether you are a manager or you are a messenger, the bus conductor doesn't want to know. You are paying the same amount. And it's extremely, extremely difficult. A lot of people who are now trekking okay. unnecessarily. Okay, let me... So these are, these, are, these are things that I think require immediate response sector specific response in a way that we trickle down and in a way that will be inclusive but are you at this juncture uh, perceiving or seeing any distinctive measure aimed at the sectors relevant to ameliorate the condition are you seeing measures being taken specific to this to these uh, sectors that you have itemized? No, I haven't seen much of it. I haven't seen much of it, I must confess. Uh, and that what we have seen so far are uh, palliatives, distribution of items, cash transfers, and so on. But given the enormity of the challenge, and given the number of people, the number of Nigerians involved in this, so we are talking about over 100 million people. Cash transfers cannot address that. The distribution of palliatives, maybe maize or grains or rice, cannot address that. Let me quickly go. Let, let me quickly go to your, Let me quickly go to your colleague now, uh, Mr. Laje. Uh, in the backdrop of all this, the Central Bank of Nigeria removed the the listing uh, from forex uh, market or legitimate forest market or the the uh, licensed forest market of 43 items that have been uh, put on a no no distinct list before uh, a number of uh, a number of manufacturers have been quoted to have said that that measure is inimical to, to their uh, productivity. So uh, how would you want to reflect on some of the things we've, we've, we've touched on before and, and that issue? Well, the, remove, the resolution of the 43 items that were before now banned by the central bank from assessing FX is not to the effect that the commodity importation was banned by itself. Apart from a few lists that was, of course, on the immigration list that could not come to Nigeria, 
some other things could find their way to Nigeria, provided they can go to the parallel market to finance uh, using parallel market or whatever source, you know, non-valid. Once they can bring it in, it was fine. So authority, in my opinion, thought that these 43 items were the things driving the parallel market to become more potent. And I have mentioned time and again that nearly 60% of the pressure you are seeing in parallel market today, it is not because of 43 items. It's not even because of uh, 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 manufacturers that want to bring in raw material. It is largely because of confidence. People don't believe that their Naira is not going to get weaker tomorrow. They therefore resorted to going to parallel market because they feel one of the important characteristics of money, which of course is storability, and one of the function of money is store of value. They now feel that if this time last month, the, the official rate of Naira was 700, today is worse than 800 at official window. A parallel market, it was 900. Today, it's worse than 1,200. The question is, if they want to buy commodity, and let's take ourselves for instance, we are using phone. I'm using phone to communicate with you, having the, uh, to have this interview. When I want to buy another phone, the inflation figure, as well as exchange devaluation, will reflect on phone. Do you know that if I want to buy corn, that is not even imported? The pressure of inflation and exchange will also reflect. You may ask me why. Because the corn seller lives in the same economy that have been faced with economic hardship. And he also needs to buy food. He needs to exchange what is any for other things. So if inflation has occurred on his rent, or inflation has occurred on transport and so many and so many other things, it will also increase the price of his source of livelihood. And this is how economy go around. Unfortunately, unfortunately. 43 items as, as suggested by the central bank is to reduce the pressure on parallel market demand and I underline demand. We have still not done the we have still not solved the real problem. And what's the real problem? Supply, supply, and top. And I don't know if we have time. Thank you, I've mentioned it on several platforms. What should we be doing? How should we address supply concerns? What I would have expected. Uh, Mr. What I expected. Mr. 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 Laje, Mr. Laje. I can bet we will bring you back no, 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 for no. the suggestion of the supply on the supply yeah, side. We, we, we want to say thank you, Mr. Laje. Uh, uh, Mr. Yusuf, you want to give us your closing, your closing word, please? And your WhatsApp. Uh, Mr. Yusuf? Okay. Okay, oh, okay then we have to sign up. At this sign off at this juncture. I uh, thank you, gentlemen, uh, for guesting on the show. I uh, will go on a short break, and when we're back, we we'll take on the next topic.